these notes are on the five methods that we've been looking at for solving quadratic functions. Uh, the five methods are a table, a graph, factoring, completing the square, and quadratic formula. Um, for the method of table and graph, if, generally speaking, you can only, you, you can only, it's easier to graph the function if it is written in vertex form. Since this function is not written in vertex form, and I'm not necessarily at this point, if I wanted to use the table method given this function, the way this function is written, I would actually probably take out my graphing calculator. So that's what I'm going to do. So I have here my graphing calculator. I have my y equals screen. So I'm going to plug in x squared, subtracting 2x, subtracting 15. I'm going to say, please graph this. And my graph, I don't see the full picture. So I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to go back to the standard window. So I'm going to zoom and pick the standard 6. Uh, and this gives me a much, much better picture. So for the table, I'm going to go to the table, which is second graph. And I can see here when I'm looking at my table that I'm looking for when y is 0 and y is 0 right here when x is, is negative 3. And then I can see here that the numbers, ah, right here is my turning point. See how these are both negative 12, which means that my vertex ah, is right there, 1, neg one negative 16, which means my other x-intercept is going to be higher than 3, and lo and behold, there it is. So that's using the table. Now if I wanted to use the graph, I would probably in this case again use my graphing calculator. So I've already got the function inputted, so I'm going to say graph. There's my lovely picture of my function. And so now I have to use the method of finding the x-intercepts uh, with the calculator. So calculate, so second trace. I'm looking for the zero values. It's asking me to go to the left and right. So left of this most left x-intercept is kind of above it. I press enter. To the right is below it. I press enter. I don't really care about guessing, so I press enter. And there's my negative 3 comma 0. And again, I do the same process all over again, but for the x-intercept on the right-hand side. So now I want to get to the left of the right-hand side. And the left of the right-hand side is kind of below the x-intercept. And the right will be above the x-intercept. Don't care to guess. And there's my second one, 5 comma 0. The next method uh, is factoring, and I can't use my calculator for that. So I have x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. Um, again, you'll remember when we did this factoring, I'm looking for two numbers at the beginning of my parentheses that multiply to be x squared. That's going to be x and x. I'm then looking for two numbers that multiply to be negative 15. So that's 1 and 15, 3 and 5, where one of them has to be negative, um, so that this part, when I multiply this out, that these two values equal negative 2x. So um, 1 and 15 don't have a difference of 2, but 3 and 5 do. Um, so I have 3 and 5. And if I want the 2 to be negative, then it must be that my 5 is negative. Um, just to double check, I have 3x and negative 5x, which when I combine those like terms, does indeed equal negative 2x. So now I have to solve this in order for two quantities being multiplied to equal 0. One of them must equal 0. So I have x equals negative 3 or x equals 5. Oh, so it also means that up here I could write my answers as x equals negative 3 or 5, and x equals negative 3 or 5. Other two methods, my fourth method is completing the square. 
So for completing the square, I start with my, my function. I have x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. Um, for the completing the square, I'm using when my equation equals 0, I'm going to use one of the many methods that we talked about earlier in the, in the module. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually to move my 15 over to the right-hand side. And then I'm going to complete the square by taking my b, dividing it by 2, and squaring it which is positive one. So I'm going to add one here, which means I'm also going to add one to the other side because I don't want to change the value of my equation. I simply want to change what dress outfit it is wearing. So now I have the left-hand side is a perfect square trinomial. I write it as a perfect square binomial. Simplify the right-hand side. In order to um, get rid of the squared, I need to square root. So I have the square root of x minus 1 equals the absolute value of the square root of 16. So I have the square root of x minus 1 equals the absolute value of 4, which means x minus 1 equals 4, or x minus 1 equals negative 4. So now I can um, solve this further. Oh, I'm sorry. I put the absolute value in the wrong location. Excuse me for that. Um, it actually, little typos, little typos here. I apologize for that. Um, it actually is that when I square, I'm square rooting both sides, and when I simplify, the square root of x minus 1 quantity squared, it's the absolute value of x minus 1 equals positive 4, which means that either x minus, 4, x minus 1 equals 4 or x minus 1 equals negative 4. Remember that when I'm taking the square root, I have to make sure that my answers are positive, and the way I do that is to use absolute value so that whenever, whatever I plug in for x, um, when I take the absolute value of it, is distance, it's positive, so I can take the square root of that. So then x is going to equal 5, or x equals um, negative 3. Um, the last of our five methods is quadratic formula. So I'm going to start by writing out the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. My a is 1, my b is negative 2, and my c is negative 15. Um, so I have x equals the negative of negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I have positive 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 60 all over 2. x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 64 all over 2. That's 2 plus or minus the square root. Excuse me. I seem to be having some trouble square, using my square roots today. Um, 2 plus or minus 8 all over 2. So that's 2 plus 8 over 2 and 2 minus 8 over 2, which means x equals 10 over 2 or negative 6 over 2. So these five methods all serve a purpose, and they all serve a purpose in a different context. The question always is, which method is best? Um, you know, most people gravitate towards one method at some point, and most people have a favorite method. For instance, generally speaking, my favorite method is completing the square. However, completing the square can be hard at times. So I really like completing the square when a equals 1 and b is an even number. Because then when I'm actually doing the process of completing the square, I don't have to worry about um, um, having an a value in the front, and I can actually complete the square and get an integer, get a whole number. 
makes it a little easier. The one catch being, or if a equals a number that divides b and c evenly, and then results in b equaling an even number. The quadratic formula is always going to work. There's never a time when it's not going to work. The catch here is that the quadratic formula requires me to memorize um, and therefore leaves the possibility open for me to make a mistake somewhere. And so generally I use the quadratic formula as like my last, like I can't figure out any other method to use. Nothing else works out nicely. So I'm going to have to, you know, pull out the formula and plug stuff in and just be very careful with my positive and negative signs. Factoring is the most kind of straightforward method, but it only works only works if f of x is factorable. And so there's a limit there because we can have an x-intercept, a solution to quadratic functions. Not all of them are going to be integers. And so I, I'm limited there for, for how many are actually going to work. But if I can factor it, that is the fastest, quickest, most straightforward method. Um, a table and a graph, I both tend to use those only when I can, can have access to a graphing calculator. And my answers are integers. Otherwise, I'm going to get an approximate answer. The calculator is never going to come back and tell me that my x-intercept is the square root of 4. It's going to give me a decimal, sorry, the square root of 5. It's going to give me a decimal. It's going to say it's approximately 2 point something, something, something. But I won't have an exact value. I'll only have an, an estimate. So if I need an answer that is not an integer, I'm going to need to use completing the square or quadratic formula. If my answer is an integer, then the table graph or factoring work quite nicely.